Hi everyone, welcome to the fourth day of the YouTube 10 on 10 series. I hope you are also giving the daily telegram quizzes that are happening. Just be a part of this entire revision schedule because it will help you remain on track in the last few days before the exam because that is when you tend to get distracted the most. Now first before I begin, there was a homework which I gave you where you had to answer the different dumbbells. Because I taught you the dumbbell bodies that is asbestos bodies in the lungs, I had asked you which DNA virus has a dumbbell DNA and the answer is pox virus. And then which which urine crystal looks dumbbell in shape that is mona is dumb how could anyone get it wrong calcium oxalate monohydrate and all of you of course gave a correct answer now let's move on with the questions that we have today question number one is from immunology in fact the first two questions are and they ask you what is the first line of defense against the tumor or a viral infection so against tumor cells and against viruses the first line of defense in our body are the nk cells or the natural killer cells in fact you might feel that okay the uh, you know the viruses are killed by the T lymphocytes but that is always the second step the first line of defense that has been asked will always be the natural killer cells and they are associated with some very important CD markers and that's your only homework for the day because I know we have done it with a beautiful story in our rapid revision video so you will remember those CD markers we called him a bodybuilder also very powerful with those CD markers so I'm sure you remember that moving on to question two again from immunology and that is to do with severe combined immunodeficiency and that is of the X-linked type they are asking you what is the most common genetic mutation so when they are saying X-linked variety this means severe combined immunodeficiencies of another variety called autosomal recessive over here skid of XLR variety was asked and the answer is a problem in the gamma subunit please understand we are talking about immunodeficiency this means the immunity of the patient has gone down when we say severe it's going to be severe because it's combined which means the B cells the T cells and the NK cells all have stopped working that is why the immunity has gone down now this can be of two types when they say X-linked recessive there is a problem in the gamma subunit of cytokine receptors the way you write X is the way you write gamma so X-linked recessive is gamma subunit of cytokine receptors is a problem whereas all the other options given over here are autosomal recessive type of skid so we have learned the most common autosomal recessive defect that we have is adenosine d -amine deficiency that was written over here ADA deficiency apart from that we can have the jack 3 gene defect that is going to be noted or the rag 1 and 2 gene defect that is noted please note over here either ADA deficiency or jack 3 or rag 1 2 these are all to do with autosomal recessive whereas the gamma subunit being a problem that is associated with XLR either ways the patient will be having skid that is severe decrease in immunity and lot of infections moving on to question 3 in the last two three sessions I have shown you a couple of giant cells today also I'll show you a spotter image of a giant cell but if I ask you that based on cuff night sweats and fever anyway in our country we started thinking of TB by now and the classical giant cell which I showed you in the first YouTube session was the Langhans giant cell we are thinking of TB but they've asked you which cytokine is involved answer is interferon gamma we know interferons are of three types right interferon alpha beta gamma if I just ask you G for gamma G for grand granuloma formation so actually what is happening above with a giant cell is a granuloma formation and interferon gamma is responsible for it indirectly if they ask you that for TB which is the interferon responsible it is going to be interferon gamma that is why do you all remember that in TB in microbiology we do a test called IGRA IGRA is interferon gamma release assay because this is the cytokine for TB so if I've done interferon gamma, I will have to do alpha and beta also. Alpha is A for A, that is it is going to have antiviral properties. In fact, both alpha and beta have antiviral properties, but single best answer, A has antiviral properties. Beta and B, B means it is used for the treatment of a brain disease, that is multiple sclerosis treatment, we can use interferon beta. So alpha for antiviral properties, beta for brain multiple sclerosis treatment, and gamma for G, that is granuloma formation moving on to question number four a classical which you have to do once for completion of the syllabus where you've got a 20 year old woman complaining of double vision fainting spells tingling sensation in the left hand numbness in the right hand and absence of pulse in her right arm you know this is to do with pulseless disease which automatically makes it takayasu but takayasu is pulseless because which is the most common artery affected so they did an iotogram and they found occlusion of the 
the right subclavian artery, which is the most common artery affected in Takayasu. In fact, when they talk about Takayasu, I always want you to compare it with giant cell arthritis. Let's do this comparison over here. Both of these are compared because they tend to involve the large vessel. They come under large vessel vasculitis. So both the T's are going to come under it, Takayasu and temporal. Temporal arthritis, of course, temporal artery is involved and that is going to be known as the giant cell arthritis. Takayasu, on the other hand, this is going to involve the arch of aorta, most commonly subclavian branches involved and that tends to have pulseless disease which was mentioned over here. Now, if I look at the other options, just for completion, polyarthritis nodosa will always give me a history of hepatitis B surface antigen, not always, but in MCQs, yes. And P is not for P. Polyarthritis nodosa will never involve one system that is pulmonary system will not be affected. The last one is Vegner's granulomatosis. This is associated with ANCA antibodies and this can be associated with both C ANCA as well as P ANCA antibodies. However, C ANCA is more commonly affected and we have learnt it in our video lectures with the mnemonic World Cup which will tell me world for Vegner's granulomatosis, C ANCA and P ANCA but C ANCA effect is more. Moving on to question number 5 which is a sure shot again these two questions I got because I have to complete your syllabus and without this I cannot. Here they've got a 25 year old woman for gynae examination quite rare for a 25 year old to have invasive SCC but yes when that happens we think of a virus that is HPV. They've asked you what is the protein of HPV how is it causing cancer and that too at such a young age. We know that there are two proteins of HPV E6 and E7. E6 is going to go and inactivate my policeman that is P53. E7 will go and deactivate the governor of the genome that is RB gene. So P53 gone, RB gene gone. If these two main things are gone, of course, anyone will have cancers. But what are P53 and RB gene? They are actually tumor suppressor genes. They are normally tumor suppressor proteins and genes. I have caused inactivation of them. So option C is the correct answer. What is this image given? Because with HPV, of course, you are thinking of coelocyte. What is a coelocyte? It has a very dark nucleus like a raisin like a kishmish that is a raisinoid nucleus and around it you can see whitish area that is known as perinuclear halo and that is the cell they will define for the image given over here that was a coelocyte please note that yes you already know it we've done it so many times that for the hpv vaccine this question has come at least four times in the previous year we all remember it even in our sleep we can answer for the production we are using l1 capsid protein of hpv for the vaccine production moving on to question 6. This came in previous year INICT and was a very controversial question. Which anticoagulant is used in the light blue color vacutana for measuring glucose levels? And you'll be like, hang on, glucose is tested in the gray vacutana. Why are you saying light blue? But that is how the question came. Now, when such a controversial question comes, you have to mark an answer, right? You can't get into the worry of it's controversial. You have to mark an answer on the day of the exam. So now, maybe it was an intern, maybe by mistake, uh, he or she collected the glucose uh, sample in a light blue vacutana. So the question is not who has done an error. The question is asking which anticoagulant is used in light blue vacutana. Now, whatever you are trying to test is a secondary step. What is the manufacturer given you in the light blue color vacutana? That is trisodium citrate. Do you use trisodium citrate for measuring glucose levels? No. For glucose, of course, we would want to use a sodium fluoride. But over here, one more thing that was very characteristic was that if you were, let's assume that you thought that, no ma'am, I didn't think so much. I thought of glucose, I marked sodium fluoride. But is sodium fluoride used as an anticoagulant in the grey vacutana? No. Sodium fluoride is used as an additive. They have very clearly asked you anticoagulant and now they've asked you anticoagulant in light blue. So go for the colour coding and mark trisodium citrate. Yes, this was a very controversial question. Moving on to question 7, another giant cell. In the first session, I talked you Langham's giant cell. Today you can see the wreath-like arrangement of nuclei over here. So this is the two-ton giant cell. Everything in this seems round because if you look at the arrangement of the nuclei which you're calling as a wreath, this is put up on Christmas also. So this is having a round arrangement and this is going to be seen in fat disorders such as xanthoma. Coming on to question 8, even normal photos can come. Which organ is this? Guys, this is the thyroid. The normal thyroid looks like this. In anatomy, histology they can ask you, how did you identify Identify all these round structures of course are going to be the thyroid follicles what are they lined with they are lined by the
the follicular cells what is that pink color material that is present inside them this is going to be the colloid and outside the follicular cells what are these bundles of cells known as these are the parafollicular c cells and these parafollicular c cells normally we study in physiology release calcitonin for us so these are the follicular cells this is the colloid this is the parafollicular c cells that makes it a normal thyroid now you've done normal thyroid do one disease if there is a diffuse anterior neck swelling you can see diffuse the entire thyroid is enlarged it's not one nodule entire thyroid is enlarged and in the next photo rather than the pink pink color thyroid which is there i can see a lot of blue blue color lymphocytes that makes it a classical lymphocytic or hashimoto's thyroiditis lymphoid infiltrate it looks like a lymph node in fact there is so much of lymphocytic infiltrate that is why this is also referred to as lymphocytic thyroiditis hashimoto's thyroiditis where the patient is going to have hypothyroidism clinically coming on to the last it's actually a question from orthopedics so here we have a spotter you have an x-ray image i've given you a hint of an onion peel although this won't be given yes this is the classical onion skin reaction or known as the periosteal reaction this is actually the periosteal reaction giving that appearance making it even sarcoma well that of course happens to be your next homework for the day that is in even sarcoma what are the rosettes that are seen we've done these rosettes in brain tumors something that is men are some mnemonic that you are reminded of the same rosettes are seen in evings so yes we are done with the 10 things and you have two homeworks that is number 1 what are the cd markers of the nk cells and secondly in evings sarcoma which is the rosette that you are going to see in pathology well we are done with day 4 of the youtube series i'll be meeting you tomorrow on telegram with the quiz and of course subsequently with the next session i hope you are in the loop i hope you are following all of these revision cycles seriously because they will help you finish one entire revision of path and once we are done with this done with the lrrs we will have another revision of microbiology till your fmg exam so study well wishing you all the very best